Hey guys, it's Nick, and as promised, we're back with another strategy video leading up to the release of my new course for Upswing called High Stakes MTT Sessions. In today's video, we're going to cover a blind versus blind hand that illustrates some important concepts and fundamentals, and it'll give you an idea of what you can find in the new course. So let's just get into the action. So we've got a blind versus blind hand here versus Sam Greenwood on the bubble of a Poker Stars 2K high roller. Um, the first thing I like to think about when blind uh, playing blind, blind versus blind is, of course, what are the preflop ranges and how does the stack depth dictate the uh, preflop strategy? So here at 30 blinds, as opposed to uh, being deeper, we expect to see a, uh, a good player like Sam raise first in with a lot of his 10s plus, um, ace-8 suited plus, some ace-7 suited plus and um, hit, probably limp his like ace-10 through ace-king off um, and probably raise his king-queen, king-jack suited and limp his like queen-jack suited, uh, king-10 suited types. So that's going to be kind of his value range and he'll probably do some limping and raising with something like king-queen off and uh, king-jack off and maybe a little bit of king-10. And then the rest of his raising range will come from some of the suited twos and threes and some middling offsuit stuff like 10-7 off, jack-8 off. Uh, so when he does limp here, as in, uh, and uh, if he was deeper, we would expect him to uh, be limping a lot of those value hands. Now, like 100 blinds deep, he would almost be always limping, right? So that's the big difference of this stack depth is that when he limps, we can be fairly confident he doesn't have any of the big suited aces and he doesn't have... Uh, any pair above nines and even nines will raise sometimes, uh, but he will have for his really strong hands his ace ten through ace king off, and then the rest of his limping range is a lot of the you know big gap suited stuff, the offsuit stuff. He's really only folding the junkiest offsuit twos and threes, like his six two soft types, his nine three off. So um, the limping range is pretty diverse and does cover his, uh, he is protected by those big offsuit ace limps. When he does limp, I will ISO up just under 40% here. Um, my ISO range will look like, for value of course, I'll probably have uh, ace nine off, maybe even ace eight off, and a little bit of ace seven off, and then I'll have ace six suited. Um, I will raise Probably in terms of the suited broadways at this depth, I'll have a similar combos to what I mentioned for his raise first in. So that'll be, you know, raising my king jack suited for value sometimes. Probably checking my king ten suited quite a bit, my queen ten suited, and my uh, queen jack suited quite a bit myself. And my bluffs are going to come from a more polarized range than his because he gets he's playing out of position, so I get to raise stuff like my. Offsuit twos like my nine deuce off, uh, ten deuce off, jack four off types, in addition to uh, some frequency with a bunch of different suited hands. Um, but in any case, when it goes limp check uh, and we get post flop here, uh, we want to think about what does this board mean for those ranges. Um, and I think this specific board, the ace king five, when we consider that out of position is limping some of those big offsuit aces and is limping some of the small ones and is limping ace two through ace six suited. And when I face that limp, I'm isoing um, ace, I'm probably just jamming ace two off and then I'm probably checking the ace three through ace six the most often and then using my ace seven, ace eight as bluffs sometimes, um, but checking them sometimes too. And then, um, or not as bluffs, but as shoves or raises. And uh, and then I'm, my ace nine off is just kind of a value raise, as is my, I have some frequency with the suited ace four, five, six. And then I'm probably just pure raising ace seven suited. So I'm really uh, lacking ace x combos here compared to a range that has all those big ace x uh, limps. And in addition to that, I'm gonna be raising a lot of my good suited kings, like I mentioned. I'm gonna bluff with some stuff like king eight off and king seven off. Um, and then I'm gonna raise for value with stuff like king queen and king jack. So the stuff that I check at really high frequency that gets here, uh, and I literally never have a pair pre-flop, I'm always doing something with my twos through aces. Uh, 
So once we get here, I'm unpaired very, very often. So Sam can play probably his highest frequency C bet that he on this line, uh, like when it goes limp check at about 30 blinds, I think this board and other ace high boards are really, really high C bets for him, probably up to like 70% or so. And it'll be just for the small size, even though on ace king five, he has a huge um, advantage in terms of strong hands. Obviously, I never have a set. I never have top two. I very rarely have a, a two pair that's not king five off. Uh, he's still so wide free when he's limping and he is still uh, raising so many strong hands to begin with that he just wants to play the small size. And when he has a strong hand, he's going to get all the money in anyway. So it's not like he has to start betting big to get all the money in for value. So considering that he's going to bet one big blind here a bunch, uh, I have to continue. And that's one of the concepts we want to hammer home in these videos that I have to continue very wide here. Even stuff just like backdoors like with two overs to the five, like a six, eight off or a seven, eight off or a, even a nine, seven sometimes. And I'm never folding a back door like this. Um, I do think like hands like this and the suited jacks and the suited queens will always call and not mix a raising frequency. And then I'll uh, draw my bluffs from my worst back doors, like my three, four, deuce four, or deuce six suited. Um, some five X, maybe even a little bit of King X for a mergey value range because I'm lacking in so much ace X and I want to raise stuff like Jack 10 also, uh, I think this hand just goes into a calling range pretty much every time. Uh, now we do get one of the best cards in the deck for our hand to start bluffing with when check two, and we're going to play this hand, uh, this card really polar if we're check two, and then we'll just have some, you know, a give up if we face a bet. Uh, so when check two, we are going to bet some of our best king x. Um, of course, we're going to bet our two pair, but we're going to bet some of the king queen that we checked. We're going to bet some of the king 10 that we checked. But other than that, we're probably going to be checking most of our kings. And we're going to be betting our aces that we do have uh, that we checked pre. So we're playing this card pretty polar, and we want to use a big size with our bluffs and our value. Um, we will have some small size, but a hand like this wants to go into a polar big size betting range. We would bluff with some of our other queen X and we would bluff with uh, some of our, a lot of our flush draws that made the back door are gonna start betting now. Um, all of our six, seven, eight, nine high flush draws really like to force folds right away and also have some additional equity they can push. And, uh, but in any case, this hand is also gonna do a good job of targeting check calls from some of flush draws that he doesn't bet. Um, some five X flush draws, some queen X flush draws and then we'll be able to continue on a non-club quite often there. This is just gonna end up being one of our good bluff combos on a lot of different runouts. When we do face the check call there, we expect him if he does check something like ace king and ace jack, especially a great player that uh, knows how to nail these frequencies, we expect to see a check raise quite often. Um, it, especially if we use a smaller size versus the bigger size, I think if we bet like 80% pot, he still has a really high frequency check raise. Um, so when he does check call, I think it's a lot of 5X of clubs. I think it's a lot of King X of clubs or just other club draws like uh, his own 10 high or queen high flush draw that didn't want to barrel. Um, so we're going to be facing a lot of flush draws, a lot of King X and some 5X of, of, the, of the flush draw and some Jack X that he see bet and then turn to pair with. Obviously he wouldn't continue bluffing there. So now we're, we get a Bricky River uh, when considering his queen high and uh, queen high flush draws and some of his 5x flush draws. I think if we're playing for pure chips um, and not in an ICM scenario, when check two, we should be shoving. Um, but in this scenario, when we're targeting mostly the 5x of flush draw and some missed flush draws and we have 10 high, I think it's fine to leave some back uh, when we do run into a calling hand. Uh, I don't think that it changes his calling threshold with King X that much if we just like pot it instead of shoving and leave ourselves some chips back so that we still have some equity in the tournament. But when check two here, I would like to see myself shove in a pure chip scenario. And it might even be better in an ICM scenario, but I do remember just potting it here or betting like 80%, which I do think is okay. I think the important thing here is we have a pure bluffing combo. We're gonna give up with all of those back doors that we bluffed with on the turn, or a lot of them anyway. And then we'll probably continue with some of our worst ones like 
when we floated the 6-3 of clubs, we'll probably bluff with that one quite a bit. It doesn't really interact with a lot of his, uh, his, you know, 5x or king x. So I think we want to bluff with this one. Uh, we're going to want to bluff with some of those queen x uh, backdoors that we had, both flush draw and not. And um, we're going to want to use the 10x and queen x quite a bit for the queen 10 blockers. And <clears throat> I think this hand is just one of our best bluffs here. So we do make the uh, slightly under pot bet, which I think is fine leaving ourselves some back. I might have left a little bit too much back here, but it's pretty pretty small differences and uh, it does get through. So we were lucky lucky to f run into the fold there. And I like, I like the combo use. And the, the big takeaways here are, you really want to consider what preflop ranges are and how they're going to affect post-flop strategy. We want to make sure that we're continuing wide enough versus those wide c bets here, not folding any back doors, not even folding stuff like eight high with two over to the five in a back door, um, and just being conscious of how wide ranges are in these limp check pots and how wide you need to continue. So thanks for watching and look out next week for another video that will release a little bit more content from the actual uh, upcoming course. So. Uh, we're excited to release it and we hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks guys.